Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. JSE-listed iron ore miner Kumba has opened a new open access automated iron ore sampling plant at the port of Saldana. Mining Weekly editor Martin Kremer was at the launch and is here to tell us more. Welcome Martin. Thanks Shannon. Can you briefly tell us about the plant as well as the reasons that Kumba embarked on this project? Well, just think of high technology, think of robots, uh, pick and place robots, think of everything modern, mm -hmm. and that's what's in this new RoboLab. And uh, although South Africans aren't the big volume exporters of uh, iron ore, that preserve belongs to the Australians and um, <coughs> the Brazilians, mm -hmm. I say to the Brazilians and Australians, eat your heart out, because this really uplifts the quality and takes us into the highest echelon of uh, high technology. And the reason is to make sure that people who are thousands of miles away uh, get the right product and that we know that 100% before it leaves the port. Because it's no good the, the, the boat having sailed mm. with the iron ore on it. Iron ore uh, then gets to the port and they find out, no, this is not what we ordered and they turn the ship around. And that's when all the financial disputes instead um, they used to always check with the laboratories, but it used to take f between 3 and 14 days. You start getting results with this high-tech robo-lab and its cutting-edge stuff within three hours of the first delivery. So before that ship leaves, yeah. you know what's in it, you know the specification, you know, and you can confirm because you're using international standards organization benchmark that that is correct, and you can bill your client. <laughs> and in billing early, you receive payment early, earlier. Yes. And, you know, that is always the name of the game. Get that cash flow in early. And, and this is the huge benefit of them. When you think that our volumes are relatively small, I think this year we'll export through the Port of Saldana, which is our iron ore channel with the rail, something like 50 million tons. But Kumba Iron Ore, which, uh, you know, last year exported 36 million tons, they generated a profit in that year, 14 billion rand. So you can see the sort of margins of profit that are coming out of this business at the moment as the world wants iron ore, it wants manganese, it wants coking coal to make steel. And uh, that's where we're scoring with this uh, new lab, this robo lab. Now, what are the benefits of the new sampling plant as opposed to traditional laboratory testing? You did mention the time frame. That's right. You know, this quick turnaround is so essential. I mean, while we were there, we would see the ship. The, you, can, you know, the ship is uh, within sight. You can see the, the train coming. Mm. The train is then, uh, the, the, the wagons are tippled. So the iron ore gets tipped out of these trains uh, and, and it immediately goes in two streams, you know, into the ship. At the same time, the, there's a cutting of, of this materials and, and taking uh, some of the samples into this lab so that they can quickly find out what its chemical comp composition is so that they can confirm without any shadow of a doubt mm -hmm. what sort of uh, um, the, the, the moisture level, uh, the physical properties. And physical properties are important with this one because uh, we, we blessed with particularly hard uh, iron ore, which is also a benefit for us, and also the chemical properties and um, so that people, uh, you can work to spec. Mm. Now also Western Cape Finance and Economic Development Minister Alan Wind uh, draws attention to how beneficiation can be implemented in the area. Can you elaborate? Yeah, you know, Alan Windy, uh, he's cock a hoop. Uh, you know, he's now uh, persuaded the government that they should create an industrial development zone in this area of Saldana and also they're looking at the area from the Cape Town Harbour all the way through to Saldana to try and work on uh, growth drivers. Mm. He wants to drive economic growth. Now already that patch of land from the Cape Town, Port of Cape Town and the city of Cape Town to Saldana generates 80% of the revenue in the Western Cape, the whole of the Western Cape. Mm. They want to put some more engines of growth in there and they want to declare it an industrial development zone. They've done their first phase study and they've now uh, getting 10 million rand to do the second phase to decide exactly what they should put in there. Mm -hmm. And you know, while we were chatting to Alan Windy, he pointed to an oil rig. And that particular oil rig, for, for the period that it's in there, I'm not too sure how many weeks it is, I think it could be eight weeks, mm -hmm. it puts 200 million rand on our current account. So he said, look, if we could fill this mm. harbor with these oil rigs, and there's a lot of drilling going on on the west coast of Africa, mm. 
you know, not even as high up as as, um, uh, as uh, Nigeria. We know that there's a lot of activity there, but you know, off the Congo, off the DRC now, there's drilling. Angola, there's drilling, and he's uh, well, there is drilling closer as well um, to to uh, Cape Town and in Namibia. Mm. They want to get that opportunity of servicing those oil rigs, and when they come in there, it means. Hun, you know, uh, millions of dollars and a lot of jobs for Cape Town. So he's got his eye on having more berths there to, to put in those uh, oil and gas rigs. And at the same time, he realizes that the government will want to push beneficiation mm. because that's the, the big word at the moment, the B word. And Rob Davies, the, the Minister of Trade and Industries, has already been down there and he's got his eye on a beneficiation plant, which they might cite quite close to uh, ArcelorMittal steel plant uh, to add value to titanium because at Brunsa Bay you've got um, uh, Exoro uh, producing um, titanium. Now I think that sells at about $400 a ton but if you can uplift that it's a marvelous uplift if you take it to titanium alloy. Mm. You know um, people are talking about many times the value that you can raise and he's wanting to set up a plant there so there's a separate study going on into the feasibility of that and it might also involve zirconium and a whole lot of other metals that they will add value to that'll be a typical industrial development zone you know where you attract foreign investment on the basis that they're not going to pay the same tax as other people because uh, you, you're actually working on an, a re-export uh, operation you know you, you're working at this port but you're not taking the, the, the products inland in any large quantity, you're exporting them straight away. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to pay the duties and so there's a lot of benefits. So it could be a huge uh, boost for the Saldana area. And of course the mayor of Saldana was there, um, uh, Ramdul Abdul, and he was saying we can get 129,000 jobs out of this. So they cock a hoop down Western Cape Way. Can you elaborate a bit more on the type of jobs and what sort of skills will be required? Well, you know, just I'm talking about this little sampling plant now. Mm. You know, I said to him, hey, you, you, you're robbing the Western Cape of jobs. He said, no, we're not. <laughs> he said, firstly, we went on a policy of not actually retrenching anybody around this. But secondly, the spin-off for the engineering area is substantial. Mm. You know, there's going to be a lot of servicing of those robots. There's going to be a lot of servicing of the actual engineering uh, setup there at the port with the rail tipple and the rail and all that. It, it creates a lot of um, job spin-off. So you, you need to have that very high technology because, you know, you're competing in the rest of the world. You've got to compete with the Brazilians. You've got to beat the Australians. And so you don't want to go into uh, um, labor intensity there because it's a very repetitive job. It will drive people up the wall. You know, you've got to do the same thing over and over again. Very small particles. So it is tailor-made mm. for high-tech automation, and that's what it's got. But it's not to say that there's going to be a job loss out of that. And then also the, the other areas, they will be, uh, you know, in this metals and minerals beneficiation, are they looking to, to jobs that um, are not really labor-intensive, high-value, but at the same time, fairly service orientated. There'll be a lot of service orientation around the oil and, and gas business and um, some of the other businesses that they want to develop there, like for, uh, they're looking at themselves as a green energy hub as well, you know, for renewable energy products, making them there, maybe wind turbines and things like that. Well, it sounds very exciting and I hope for all the best. Thanks very much, Shannon. Thanks, Martin. That's the show for today. Join us again next time for more news and insights into what's happening in the mining world. For 30 years, Crema Media's engineering news has delivered unmatched insight into South Africa's real economy. Subscribe now and go to engineeringnews.co.za for the real economy in real time. Engineering news, not just for engineers.